All right, let's talk about inverters, guys. First, what is an inverter? An inverter is just a device that will convert a DC voltage into an AC voltage, right? DC direct current into an alternating current. Now, why might you want to do that? Well, there's several reasons. Uh, energy storage devices, sort of like batteries, stuff that can hold energy in there, always run on direct current, right? Also solar panels, the stuff that you put on your roof that collects the energy from the sun, also makes direct current. And so you want to convert it into alternating current because that's what your house uses. All of the appliances that are inside your home, all of the outlets that are inside your home use an alternating current. And there's many reasons for that, but that is essentially what a inverter is. And there are several types of these inverters, right? Uh, two of the most popular ones or two of the most basic ones are an off-grid inverter. And this is a box that takes a DC source, here again, be a battery, for example, and then your load could be anything. It could be your home, it could be a car, it could be a toaster, anything that it runs on any of the standards. And the standards are, might be, you know, 110 AC volts or, you know, 220. So that's the off-grid, right? And in order to charge your battery system then you would have probably solar with the little charger that is dedicated for this specific task uh in which case they're called solar charge controller it's just a charger that it's made for the specific reason so that's a off-grid system right but then there are the grid tie system if you're in california or some of the other states like california you might have seen these grid tie inverters right when you go into these parking lots that they're putting all these solar panels uh, then you would see these inverters like here, right? These are grid tie inverters and these are even simpler because these operate this way, right? So there's a bunch of solar panels, right? And they usually run them in series, uh, multiple of these panels in series up until like somewhere like 600 volts, right? And so then what that allows them to use real thin wires and cables to connect to the inverter. Then this inverter converts that DC power into AC. And in this case, uh, most of these will convert them to two-phase AC because that is what the grid usually comes. Anything that is, you know, residential and up to some commercial, right? And so these are very popular. They're everywhere. They're about the, the most economical systems that you can put in there. And I want to say 99% of the solar systems here in California are grid tie inverters. There's slightly different variations. There's somewhere like they split the inverter into each panel. So each panel will have one tiny little inverter or like this kind that is centralized and all the panels connect into the one. And each one has different advantages and disadvantages, right? But today I want to talk to you about this one, right? The one that is centralized that runs all the solar panels in series creates energy to the grid. The reason I want to talk to you about that is because, well, we have some. Uh, I'm always trying to figure out how to do stuff more efficiently and economically and stuff. And so that has led us to, you know, what I do now and source out a bunch of batteries that are overstock and, you know, use and, you know, recycled and sold stuff. Well, these inverters are actually pretty high quality inverters. They're a few years old, but they're brand new. I partner up with Tom at batteryhookups.com to promote these because this is just really good deal, right? And so let's look at one. I've just received two of these. There are several versions available, but let's look at the one that I have here on the bench. And on this one video, I'm just typically gonna go through what's in there, the build quality, take it apart, see the internals, you know, talk a little bit about how you connect it, you know, stuff like that, right? I'm not gonna actually connect it and make it work. I'm gonna leave that to a future video that is going to come very soon because I do want to actually use one of these and test it and try to hack it and see if we can use it in a little bit different ways that they were designed into, right? So let's go look at it. All right, here we go. This is what this one looks like. This is the Dan Fox DLX 3.8 UL. Uh, the 3.8 is uh, the rating, the, you know, kilowatt rating, right? So 3.8 kilowatt, about 3,800 watts that this one will put out, right? And so it comes in this box like this. Here's the original box. And then I took it out. So let's look at the internals. Let's see what's in there. So this is a switch that's in here, right? And you flip it and this is, you know, turns on something in the inverter. Uh, we're going to see what that uh, does, but... Basically, to take it apart, you'd have to remove the screws here. I already loosened them. And you gotta make sure that when you do this, 
the switch is off or else this cover will just not come out right so let's take that off bam look at that once you and that is obviously a safety feature to prevent people from opening this thing while it's connected and basically what that is is a switch is here it disconnects the dc side so basically the solar panels would be coming and they would connect here they would go through these fuses and then they would go through these switches it's got a weird switch here because it zigzags there's like one two three four five six switches and they use all of them right but they put them like in series or something i don't know why that is but they just do it that way so let's just go with it i guess uh and then the uh solar yeah so the solar dc power comes in here goes through the switch and then it comes out here and that's just where it goes into the inverter on this side right here you have the ac side and you have your l1 l2 which is neutral and then you have your ground your ground comes here and it's got a bar a ground uh you know bar here or strap or whatever they call that terminal and then this is also grounded because the dc will have to be grounded and of course you can choose uh i guess this is the ungrounded terminal and this is the grounded terminal right but they don't specify negative or positive because i guess there are different systems that will be grounded on the positive side or they will ground it on the negative so if that's the case you will have to swap this right right now it's set for the negative to be grounded right because that one's here but if you have a system of solar panels or for some reason you have to do, have it on the positive then you would swap them and then uh yeah, and then the, the positive would be the grounded one, and then that grounding happens through, through this thing here. Um, then you would have to switch this negative, positive, isolated uh, little pin here, right? Pretty simple stuff. Uh, in order to get all the power in here, you'd have to crack, you know, some of these um, breakout holes here if you want the uh, conduits to come in through the bottom or if you through the side or you can also come from the back uh but this is pretty tough it's got this seals uh you can really tell that this thing is designed to be able to be installed outside it's pretty hefty everything is weather sealed and yeah it should be able to survive to be outside it's got it doesn't have fans actually it's got one little fan here so i guess this kind of radiates uh the heat away from it so it looks like it's aluminum this is actually plastic or some kind of plastic but this is aluminum uh it looks like cast aluminum right so let's look at what's inside the inverter now and for that you'll have to remove some screws from the back here which i already did and so in order to remove that then you just lift it right this is uh the, the two connections for the actual uh screen uh but look at that you have big inductors here right you got some mosfets in here again you got this big weather seal uh you have a large bank of capacitors there uh these look like film caps right uh and then yeah, some MOSFETs here or some kind of transistors. And then these look like these are the uh, legs to go to a transformer. And then here are more. Either transformer, uh, red, white, let's see, yellow. Semiconductors probably behind here. Oh, no, this is probably a rectifier. Ah, I don't know. I'm just guessing at this point. Let's look and see. And see, here's a little fan. That's about it. This is the only fan in this whole unit not exactly yeah i think this gets rid of all the uh heat just it radiates it right back so let's flip this over and see if we can see the transformer on this guy all right screws that you have to take off 
here we go. So it looks like it's a toroidal uh, transformer. These ones are maybe some caps, capacitors. I don't know why these would be square. This all square. This could actually also be a transformer, a square one. Uh, we could take the screws off of here, but they're all connected from the side, and I don't know. It's just not that interesting. They're basically potted in here right and they're basically floating that shield is just goes on top and then the wall goes right here so i think this is just yeah they radiate heat or they you know convection or i don't know what the thing's called but yeah basically no fans uh big big chunky cast aluminum uh enclosure here again this is all sealed here yeah this is good quality stuff yeah all right, so this inverter looks legit uh, physically, right? It seems like it's a high quality piece of product. Now let's look at the company. I've never heard of them. If you look at danfoss.com, you can go in there about Danfoss company history. All right, so it turns out this company has been around for 85 years. It started in September 1st, 1933. Wow, September 1st. Isn't that exactly the same day that World War II started? I don't know, maybe I got my dates wrong but anyways have been in business for a long time they have a ton of employees now let's look at all right so there are factories in finland france slovakia poland poland romania china slovenia and the united states so this is oh and this is only on page one of like six so this is a pretty big corporation multinational um from, it seems like they have a ton of employees. It seems like they're very popular and these should be all over the world. So yeah, I think we should be good using these inverters. I think they're good quality stuff. All right, so if you go to batteryhookup.com, you'll be able to see that there are several of these. Uh, there are several versions of these, right? They have the 60 hertz versions and then they have the 50 hertz versions and 60 hertz are for a lot of the north american countries and the 50 hertz are for a bunch of countries around the world right so depending on where you live you you'll need to choose with between your 50 or, or 60 right when you look at the 60 they start around 2000 watts then there's a 2900 watt a 38 and a 44 watt inverter and of course that just depends on how big do you want your solar system to be and because these are overstock these are basically leftover from a huge huge multi-million dollar contract for nato then we can afford to give these things for almost next to nothing right so even though they were like you know three four thousand dollar inverters uh they start here at 350 dollars for the 2000 watt and all the way to 650 dollars for the 4400 watt one right on the 50 hertz side i think it's pretty much the same right uh there's a 29 a 3800 3800 2000 on the so on the 50 hertz apparently there are two brands not just the danfoss but there's also a d heel uh and also starts at 2000 watts all the way to 29 3800 yeah so 3800 are the ones and the same prices right 450 for the 2900 550 for the 38 uh the 2000 should be about 350 so there you go there are some pretty awesome very discounted uh grid tight inverters i am going to do some tests with these to see if i can uh use the 50 hertz on the 60 hertz uh, you know american grids uh, I'm also going to try and see if we can run them off of batteries. We sh there shouldn't be no reason why we couldn't. You know, it doesn't, the thing doesn't care where the power is coming from, if it's solar panels or batteries. So that is the plan. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that future video. That should be coming up pretty soon. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Installing the Danfoss DLX inverter with integrated monitoring. Unpack the inverter from the box and then refer to the installation guide for all the details regarding the installation process. Level the mounting plate and then drill the holes that will secure the unit on the wall.
Given its light weight and compact size, the inverter can be easily hanged by one person. You'll notice that a small plate and two screws are included in the scope of delivery. This is a locking plate that can be secured with a padlock, hence protecting the inverter against theft. Check that the DC switch is turned off and then open the inverter's lower cover to commence the cable installation. Start by connecting the AC power. Ensure that the AC gland is properly fastened. Then connect the DC cables. Finally, plug in the Ethernet cable that we will later use to connect to the home router. Again, make sure that the gland is fastened. You can now close the inverter's lower cover as all the cabling is done. Turn on the DC switch. The inverter is now ready to run the installation wizard. Start by setting the menu language, the current date, and time. Set the master unit according to the installation. If you only have one inverter and require no data upload to a web-based monitoring portal, set this option to No. Next, choose the right grid type, corresponding to your installation. Similarly, choose the right feeding phase. And then input the power of the PV plant. In the next screen, click OK to select the right grid code, corresponding to your country. In the following screens, you can input custom settings, like the screen timeout, the customer name, the site name, unit name, messages, and, if needed, the four-digit owner password. The default password is 0003. The wizard is now finished. And the DLX is installed and ready to produce power for the home. To set up the integrated monitoring, plug in the other end of the Ethernet cable in the home's router. On the inverter's screen, navigate to Setup, and then Network Setup, to change the inverter's IP address. Click OK, and then enter the owner password to access this setting. The inverter prompts you that this procedure will restart the screen. Here, set all the figures in the IP address to zero. That's 12 zeros in total. Wait for the screen to restart. And you will notice that the inverter now has a new IP address that has just been assigned by the home router. Open your laptop and make sure you are connected to the home router. In your browser, type in the IP address of the inverter as it appears on the screen. You and your client can always use the login credentials admin and admin. You are now accessing the inverter's integrated web server, which can be used by the home user to monitor his PV system. The DLX web server offers details about the production data and the inverter status in a form that is visual, intuitive and easy to navigate for the homeowner.
The Danfoss DLX is a complete residential solution that offers hassle-free installation for you as well as user-friendly design and integrated monitoring for your customer. For more information on our residential, commercial and large-scale solutions, please visit danfoss.com solar.